When Tony Lockett booted his 1300th career goal in front of a packed out SCG in round 10 of the 1999 AFL season, the 41,280 fans in attendance knew they were witnessing a feat that would likely never be repeated. The league's goal kicking record, held for 62 years by Collingwood's Gordon Coventry, would be broken with a wobbly drop punt right on the halftime siren. Nearly three months later, as the 8th place Sydney was put to the sword by a rampaging Essendon in the first week of the final series, Lockett would kick five of his swan's seven goals for the match and bow out of the competition with a final tally of 1,357 majors. Chaired off the ground by his teammates, the MCG crowd gave Plugger a fitting tribute, even if the typically quiet pig farmer from Ballarat may have preferred the spotlight to be elsewhere. But Lockett deserved his moment in the sun. After that final game on September 5th, 1999, Here's how his 1,357 goals stacked up against all the other goal kickers of years gone by. And as a way of illustrating that no one was going to be getting anywhere near that record anytime soon, let's highlight the players that were active in the AFL at that point. 1,357 goals was well more than double the goals of the nearest sharpshooter still playing in the AFL. It wasn't getting beaten. Unless... The only person that could beat Tony Lockett's record was Lockett himself. In December 2001, the story broke that Lockett not far off 36 years of age, was eyeing a comeback to the big league. Eerily similar to another sporting legend who'd had a couple of years off and wanted to test himself at the highest level once more. That's right, Paul Salmon was also making a return. Lockett in the red and white was the real story of the summer though. He was Aussie rules football in Sydney. Without his dominance and subsequent celebrity status in the Harbour City, there is an argument that the Swans may have lingered around the foot of the ladder for years on end, as opposed to the club of sustained consistency that we know them as today. So his return, albeit in the unfamiliar number 46, and initially after retracting his comeback bid in late 2001, was massive news in the footy world. But would this simply be a marketing tool for the AFL as it continued its efforts to grow the game in New South Wales, or could Lockett once again be a genuine on-field presence for the Swans? Expectations were tempered, especially as new signing Barry Hall would be playing the lead role in 2002 and beyond, but most scribes considered a season tally of around 40 goals for Lockett would be more than acceptable. Coach Rodney Ede was playing no games with the media continually reinforcing that Lockett would be consigned to second fiddle in the forward pocket. So, what was really in it for Plugger? It certainly wasn't money, with newspapers suggesting his salary would be in the order of just $50,000 and Swans general manager Colin Seary confirming he would be on more like a minimum payments. It wasn't for the individual accolades either. Lockett had a Brownlow medal, an MVP award, three best and fairest, four common medals and five All-Australians to his name. What more, really, was there to achieve? The one thing that every player craves, of course team success, a premiership. A slim down Lockett's first test was getting through the preseason unscathed. In a 15-a-side practice match versus Essendon at North Sydney Oval in February, he booted two goals three from five kicks and four marks in a performance that E described as way ahead of schedule and more than what he expected. Plugger turns back the clock, the papers proclaimed, while Patrick Smith wrote that he could prove more than a summer gimmick. Plugger mania was back, but game number two was anything but ordinary. Managing only three behinds in the opening round Wizard Cup clash against Collingwood, despite the Swans recording a thumping 80-point victory, a frustrated Lockett took out his anger on Pies defender Shane Wakeland and carelessly whacked his former teammate in the back of the head. He would walk free from the tribunal, but it was an early sign that things would not always go the burly forwards way. Rested for the next pre-season fixture against the Kangaroos, Lockett would return for their final pool match against Hawthorne rejuvenated, and although he kicked two goals in the Swans' 42-point victory, he seemed lost at times as he tried to position himself around Hall's presence. This was compounded in the semi-final loss to Port Adelaide as Lockett went scores from just two meagre possessions. His final hit out before the season proper was in a practice match against Melbourne on the weekend of the pre-season grand final. Showing glimpses of old, Lockett booted two goals four in his best lead-up game yet, but uncharacteristically dropped a couple of marks he would usually have swallowed. Journalists would not stop making mention of Plugger's trim figure, at least for his standards. But the seven kilograms less of extra baggage on Lockett's frame worked against him. He wasn't gaining any extra leg speed at 36 years of age, so bypassing the weights room in pre-season was actually a hindrance when engaging in one-on-one -on -one contests with defenders. Swans captain Paul Kelly even joked that Lockett should eat some more pies. But Lockett suited up once more for the round one clash against reigning premiers Brisbane, looking as fit as he did in the weeks prior. How would he gel with Barry Hall once the games actually started to mean something? The answer? Not so well. The Swans squandered a five goal lead to lose to the Lions by 23 points. Lockett had just one disposal from a free kick for one goal and then he finished the match with a corked thigh. The media bayed for blood, and there were already calls for him to retire. Lockett's dodgy leg would give him serious issues over the coming weeks, and it wasn't until round eight that he was considered fit enough to take the field once more, returning via Sydney's reserves affiliate Port Melbourne in the VFL. In his two matches for the Borough, Lockett booted a combined seven goals, 
but the Herald Sun's John Ralph still described him as looking slow and out of touch. It appeared certain he would miss a recall for the Swans round 10 match against Collingwood. Yet Eade sprung a surprise selection when Lockett was given the call up for the Saturday night duel at Colonial Stadium. Plugger refused to speak publicly about his own return and it proved a sadly prescient call. Four disposals, four clangers and one goal from his outing against the Pies spelled the writing on the wall for the once feared big man. Dropped from the AFL side for round 11 and held back for another trip to Port Melbourne, Lockett worked hard at training midweek to receive one final swan song in the round 12 clash at home to Geelong. But once again, he was anonymous. Kicking one goal from two touches as the Swans went down in a thriller by two points, any observer could tell that Lockett's days were numbered. And as training rolled around the next Monday, Lockett quietly announced his retirement in a farewell press conference. In it, Plugger would say he had no regrets at all and was proud to get back to playing AFL footy. On a hiding to nothing since his injury in round one, the path towards any sort of consistency was always going to be rough for the ageing forward. Looking back on a pre-season AFL record article that listed 10 things the footy public would love to see from Lockett, in hindsight, he was lucky to achieve one. The day became worse for the struggling Swans as coach Rodney Eade, too, announced his departure. For a player who returned for a shot at Premiership glory, the Swans couldn't have been further from it, and aspersions were cast on whether Plugger should even have bothered to lace up the boots again at all. But Lockett's mid-season exit was perhaps best summed up by his captain, Paul Kelly. I suppose his comeback will always be viewed as a failure, but I think just to have a go at coming back is better than not having a go at all, he said. Probably this week people will say, it didn't work out, but in a month, and next year, he'll still be the greatest goal kicker of all time. So, that record, hey? 1,357 goals. It ticked up ever so slightly, to 1,360. Yet although Lockett's ill-fated return added fuse to his goals tally, the passage of time has proven that it did nothing to hurt his legacy. Plugger remains the league's greatest ever goal kicker. And who would bet on that changing anytime soon?